Alright, good evening everyone. I wanted to make a little video, actually as an introduction to a new series I'd like to make, and God willing, Mir Hashem, I hope to make. The subject I wanted to discuss is the question of whether things have basis uh, biblically. But more than that, you know, this whole question that we often hear, what is the Bible's opinion on various subjects? Now, for me, the point of this is not really so much to teach what the Bible's opinion on it is, and not even to teach what Judaism's opinion on it is, but to point out that many people believe that it's so obvious that you can say this is the biblical opinion on this subject, when that's really specious and really, in a way, intellect intellectually dishonest. I don't mean to be disrespectful by saying this because I have a lot of respect for people of other faiths uh, who have different ideas. Um, and I don't forgive them to have their own faith, you know, and their own beliefs and their own religion. But quite often, many people who wave the banner of solo scriptura, and they put down Jews and, and, and Lahavdal Catholics or other groups, Mormons, whoever it is, who have oral traditions that are extra-biblical, although rooted in biblical tradition, um, as, you know, that, you know, they're not true to the Bible, but that they, you know, wave the banner for themselves, particularly many Protestant denominations and many who call themselves non-denominational, pride themselves on solo scriptura, that the only source for doctrine is the Bible. But the fact of the matter is, many, I'm not saying everybody, but many people from these groups, in fact, um, hold beliefs that they read into the Bible that are indeed still extra biblical. They are still what you know. They derisively, derisively. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. I think derisively will say, you know, the, this is not the word of God. These are the traditions of men when they referring to our traditions or traditions of other faiths that are different than theirs. When they're, I don't consider it a mark of guilt, but they are in a sense just as guilty. Uh, as anyone else in holding on to traditions of men uh, and reading them into the Bible uh, as opposed to what does the Bible say? Be, you know, then there are many examples of this. One very prominent one that I've seen is Isaiah 14 that they understand to be referring to the fall of Lucifer and they understand that, that to mean talking about the Satan, the devil, and his fall from grace. And uh, this is an idea that we do not find in the Jewish tradition. <clears throat> and so many Christians will say, well, how can you not have this in your tradition? It's in the Bible. It's in your Bible. It's in Isaiah. And the answer is, of course, well, that's not what it's, that's not the simple meaning of that. That is something, in a sense, very much in line with, you know, our traditions of, of, uh, of homiletic study and homiletic reading of the text that's really a homiletic reading and it's extra biblical it's not it's no it, it, you know and if something like that can be considered biblical so why can't a Jewish interpretation that's homiletical be considered biblical um, for that matter and so that's one gain from that. Again, I don't forgive anyone to have a belief like this, even though maybe I believe it's a false belief, but that's that's their choice. And, I, and, I, and again, I have a lot of respect for these different religions that have brought so much goodness to this country and to the world in general. A lot of people like to focus on the negative, but there's really so much positive that particularly Christianity has brought to America and to the world, but America in particular because of the type of Christianity practiced in America that embraces tolerance and religious freedom in the Jeffersonian sense and the constitutional sense, um, which is a bit different than, than Jefferson in a way, but also not so different. And, and this is what gives us, you know, here in America, 
the freedoms that we have and we're thankful for that and, and I recognize even though a lot of folks particularly liberal Jewish folks will be very upset at me for saying this but the fact of the matter is oh, that America was founded and and ideally it's supposed to be a Christian a Christian country maybe not a Christian state in the sense of how let's say Israel is a Jewish state or or England is a, a Anglican state that we don't have in America but what it meant, you know, when, when it says the establishment clause was simply that there shouldn't be any one national church. It never meant, you know, that uh, anything, that, that religion shouldn't be pushed away. And, that, and, you know, this whole interpretation that we've had since the 1950s of the separation of church and state, which is never written in the Constitution, never written in the Bill of Rights. And when Jefferson wrote that, he specifically meant because people were afraid that, you know, he was the president at the time when he wrote that, and people were afraid that he was, you know, as being a man who was not particularly religious, he was, you know, maybe what we would call spiritual but not religious, although he did attend church regularly. But he was, he was the type of person that we don't, we wouldn't call, so he was probably, you know, one of the least religious of the founding fathers who did, you know, have a respect for religion, you know, there were maybe one or two who were less religious than Jefferson, but he was a brilliant man, and he, when he said the separation of church and state, his point was that he wasn't making a secular country that would attack the churches, and unfortunately that's what we have today, that's a side point. Uh, really, essentially, what I want to bring out with this series is let's really look at what the Bible says, and then we can examine, you know, I'm familiar with the Jewish tradition, uh, what various traditions say, because the conclusions that a lot of people have about various subjects are not that different from those of the Jewish traditions, um, you know, particularly what a lot of Christians believe. It's not that different you know, on certain, you know, hot-button issues, although there are profound differences. Um, and the conclusions might be the same, but the way we got there is quite often very profoundly different. And, you know, this can be demonstrated, I remember many years ago when I was a rabbi in a congregation in Richmond, Virginia, there was a program in, in Richmond, it was a PBS show, and they had various speakers debating on the subjects of biblical ideas and different subjects. <clears throat> and uh, I remember Chuck Colburn was there, who, has, who had this famous, you know, the late Chuck Colburn had this famous prison ministry after his suffering in prison um, after the Watergate scandal. And, uh, you know, that changed his view of prison and, and so forth and also brought him into his faith, but uh, there was and there was a few other pastors there, and then there was one fellow, unfortunately, of Jewish uh, birth, although not of Jewish faith. Uh, I think he was an atheist, but he also was very pompously self-described as a Bible scholar, being a professor of Bible at. I believe it was George Washington University. I don't remember one of the one of the um, colleges in Washington D.C. area. And um, this fellow was rather pompous, and you know, the typical liberal college professor pontificating and, and indoctrinating, and, and in a rather offensive way. However, he, all of the speakers there gave out books, and they signed the books, and whatever. We got some free books that they had written, and. And this fellow, this professor, I don't remember his name offhand, he, he wrote a rather interesting book on the subject of how, you know, the Bible has had influence in, in American life, and, and maybe he's not so happy about it or whatever. But also the differences in how different denominations will interpret it. You know, the, the evangelical will see things differently on certain subjects than the Catholic or than the Jew. And then even among Jews, we have different, you know, different groups and so forth. And in his book, though, he wrote that one day all of his colleagues, you know, the fellow Bible professors, 
in a secular college uh, or various colleges, they all went out to a bar one night. And they were discussing, well, what's the Bible's view on different hot button topics? You know, which are some topics which we'll we plan to cover? And he said one of one of the scholars there, who was considered perhaps to be more authoritative than some of the rest. Um, woke up out of a drunken stupor after quite a few drinks and and he made the following statement he said the Bible doesn't have a view on these subjects the Bible he said is pure energy and I think that's true when you take this solo scriptura approach that is um, that's the truth because you can't you can't really come to any conclusions with a, a solo scriptura approach. And most people who wave this banner of solo scriptura are not really solo scriptura. They have some tradition, some teacher, some interpreter that they choose to follow because it's impossible to have any type of solo scriptura approach. You need, and that's really what I want to bring out here, that you need some kind of a tradition, you need some kind of interpretation to know what the Bible means. And for us as Jews, it's even more important than it is for Christians, because to the Christian, there's no lifestyle, really, that's required in the sense of how the Torah requires a lifestyle that's so precise and so mandated by God's word. Rather, they say, "All right, we're done with that, and that was that's old, you know." And they have something new, and, and to us, it's it's not old. It's never been old. There's nothing new that's been introduced. The same, the same Torah has always been and always will be. And so we're, we're going to discuss these various issues, God God willing, particularly some hot button issues that are popular in the day and um, I hope this will be respectful you know I don't I don't mean any disrespect God forbid um, and I and again I have the utmost respect for other people and other faiths but just that's what I see in myself you know even when I you know I work as a chaplain and, and I serve people of various faiths in my chaplaincy and I and I see folks who you know they'll say well this is this is the biblical worldview when it's the you know what they're expressing is really extra biblical and nothing wrong with it. I mean, not that there's nothing wrong with it, but there's you know I don't forgive you know I have no problem with with folks who who that's their religion and that's you know and I don't expect someone you know to not. Uh, have this, but to pontificate and to say, well, this is the Bible's point of view, and if you follow this denomination or that denomination, you're not really following the Bible, but if you follow what I say, then you really are. Well, the only way that we can really know that is, again, studying and, and looking, and there, you know, there is, you know, ways to study, but more than that, you know, for my faith as a Jew, well, that's, you know, we don't see it that way, that this solo scriptura approach, and really there is no such thing in any way, really, as, as solo scriptura, because there are so many different approaches, and, and even the fact of the matter, if you use a translation, you're already using an oral tradition, because how do you know how to translate these words? How do you even know, like, the story of Hillel, uh, Hillel Zaket, Hillel the Elder? Someone came to him and he said, well, can you teach me the Torah, but I only want the written Torah, not the oral Torah. And he, he said, all right, I'm going to teach you the Aleph Bays, ABCs. You know, this is Aleph, this is Bays, this is Gimel. You know, you know this is A, this is B, this is C. And then the next day, um, he taught, you know, B is A, and A is B, and C is D, and D is C. 
and and the fellow the student said, well, wait a second. Yes, they told me A was A and B was B and C was C and D was D. What? Now you're changing. And he said, ah, oh, you see now that you need an oral tradition because you don't even know how to read without someone teaching you. Nobody does. Everyone has to be taught how to read. And so really, there is an essential need for oral tradition, and that's really the message that I want to bring out for this series. Um, however, I, I also want to have an honest and frank look into Scripture, uh, both my own and even perhaps in certain cases when it comes to certain hot-button issues, maybe even look at the others and compare and contrast and and sometimes things are not as quite the same and sometimes things are not the way that we understand them culturally today. So with all these various ideas, I hope to bring out um, various ideas and help people to understand the Bible more and, you know, you'll come to your own conclusions, but I myself, you know, very strongly believe and I think, you know, that's, that'll be my slant, my, uh, my, uh, what, what do you call it, my approach here will also be that, uh, my bias, let's say, is that you do need some kind of a, a tradition and even to point out to folks who, and their traditions might be different than my own, that really they are still following some form an oral tradition and, and not only you know going by strictly what the Bible says um, just so people can understand things in an intellectually honest way and they might you know still retain and maintain their their former beliefs but that's at least they're doing so in an educated way by you know looking at the Bible hopefully looking understanding somewhat the original tongues and so forth. Um, of course, you know, to me, you know, we have a, we have a much smaller Bible than they have, in, and it's, for a Jew, it's almost insulting to package all those books together, but I understand to Christians it means a lot, and I have a lot of respect for that, and I, and I don't have, you know, I understand and I see the historical value and so forth in many of these ideas. And even with those ideas, uh, which are not part of our tradition, well, are these ideas biblical or extra-biblical? Are they, can they be read in a different way? Would they be read, you know, in the original, you know, we talk about originalism in the Constitution, you know, that was something that I, I know I bring up a lot just to say. Uh, you know, he looked for the originalism of the Constitution. Well, we should also look at the Bible in the sense of originalism. You know, even those parts that are not part of my Bible, um, perhaps as a Jew, looking at texts that I don't consider scripture, but they were probably written by Jews or someone with some kind of Jewish background or, or telling about what, how Jews lived at a certain point and how maybe these ideas were misinterpreted or changed over time and what was most likely the originalist approach when these things were written and then how new doctrines came up um, out of thin air almost. Um, so I appreciate your time and I, and I want to apologize if I offended anybody. It's not my meaning to offend anybody. Um, hope you like our programs and share them. Um, and so if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing and tell your friends and follow us on Twitter and Facebook. And I want to thank you for joining us and, and hopefully it will be an enlightening look at the Bible um, that I hope everyone can enjoy. Well, thank you so much and God bless you. And uh, I look forward to...